Hi guys and welcome to my channel. In this video I will be reviewing the artist watercolour brand Rembrandt. Rembrandt is a brand of watercolours by the Royal Talents Company based in the Netherlands. They offer both tubes and half pans for their colours. There are larger tubes and smaller tubes. The entire brand has about 50 colours, maybe more, but only a few uh, available in the larger sizes. Now here I have a few colours that I've collected since I've been watercolour painting. I don't have a whole set, these are just a few that I purchased to try the brand. A lot of the paints in the brand are single pigment and those that are dual pigment are only say two pigments usually. And they're all made up of the same pigments throughout the brand. I have both half pans and tubes available of this paint. The student grade of this paint is Van Gogh. Some of you may be familiar with it as it's often a popular student brand of paint. All of the paint here I have purchased from Jackson's Art here in the UK which offers it, offers it at a cheaper price compared to Dutch suppliers. Prices for the 5ml tubes range anywhere from 4 to £6. While painting I noticed that the colours re-wet quite easily and are easy to lay down. All of the colours are nice and bright, however they're not the most vibrant colours that I have used. They're pretty clear, but they do need quite a lot of paint to get a nice intense colour. This makes them good for glazing and layering in watercolour paintings. I have been experimenting with these paints and some of the paints do feature in my main working palette, namely the Cerulean Blue, as I find it's the cheapest Cerulean Blue that I can find for the quality. I also use colours like Cobalt Violet and the Permanent Red Middle, often in my work. Cobalt green was what I used to test the granulation in my watercolouring test it paper testing video where I tested out a range of watercolours papers. If you want to see that I will leave a link in the description below. This brand has a number of pros and cons. The pros to this paint are that it is cheaper than some brands out there such as Windsor & Newton and Daniel Smith. It is in terms of price range similar to the Schmincke brand in terms of pricing. The main problem I found with this brand is that there is nothing overwhelmingly special about it. Other brands have something that you notice about them that you're drawn to. With Schmincke it's the consistency of the paint. With colours such as Daniel Smith it's a unique colour range. And others such as Old Holland the brightness of the colours. Or Sennelier's transparency and layering abilities. Well I'm not saying Rembrandt is a terrible brand. For me there's nothing personally about it that stands out above the rest. That said, you should not disregard it. It's definitely a contender for a decent brand and it is quite nice to work with at the end of the day. The last few paints you can see watching their last four are Van Gogh colours from the student range.
One thing I noticed about the paint when unscrewing the caps is it had an odd smell to it. It had like a paint smell to it that most artist brands don't. It smelled like student grade paint almost. Cheap. However, it's not cheap. It's quite a nice quality of paint I found. One thing I did find about the tubes is there's a lot, a lot of air in all the tubes. You can see here, once the paint has dried, there's not a massive colour shift, which I guess you can say is one bonus. Particularly compared to their student range, as you can see their colours have shifted quite a lot in the student range. So here is some colour mixing. They do all mix quite nicely together as a triad. However, I do find that when mixing, they really do lose some concentration of paint and they do end up being quite washed out. I did go over the triad primary, just so you can see how bright and intense you can get the colour with layering. You can see here that there is some problems with the air in the tubes. A lot of the tubes don't contain much paint. You can see here that I'm just squeezing and squeezing without no paint coming out of the tube. This is quite frustrating because they're not overly cheap as what they used to be. I did just show some comparisons to other paint brands to see how much they used. In general, most paint brands from a five or six milliliter tube, I can find it comfortably fills two half pans. However, with the Rembrandt brand of paints, I find it, it only does about one and a bit half pans of paint. So it doesn't stretch very far. That and you need quite a lot of paint to get an intense color means the brand will be more expensive when working. So let's go over the sort of scorecard for this paint. You can see me here comparing it to Windsor and Newton, how the intensity is. Windsor and Newton only has one layer of paint as opposed to the Rembrandt, which has about three layers of paint there. So the scorecard on how these all stack up paint is not overly available. You can find it online in a few retailers, but you won't find it in most local art shops. So I only gave that a free star. The color range is only a free star as well, as it is not does not offer as many colors as other art ranges do. I originally gave the cost of the paint five stars, because back when I started this review, the paint was much cheaper at around three pounds, three pounds fifty a for a five milliliter tube, which was a steal. However, the price has now gone up, so it probably loses a star from this. But I feel, since working with this paint a bit more, that the colour deserves an extra star, so it should be around the same total value. The value of the paint is a free star, as you don't get a lot of paint for your money because of the air in the tubes and the fact that you need to use more paint to get an intense colour, so the paint does not stretch as far as some other brands. The colour re-amended is four stars. I do think the colours are quite nice, they're quite clear and they're just quite beautiful and they're good for layering. They're not so intense though. The consistency is not so good either, only at three stars. This is mostly because of the air in the tube. I did not get a lot of paint in any of the tubes. I found this quite consistent throughout the board of all the colours that I tried. So this brings an end to the review. Overall, it's got a 20 out of 30 stars. It's not too bad. This is not an amazing paint compared to others. I wouldn't go out my way and rush out and buy it straight away. However, if you do come across a good bargain, bargain which you can do with their complete watercolour palettes, then I do recommend you go for it, as it's um, a fairly decent brand of paint. I would not disregard it as a bad brand, because it is pretty good at the end of the day. It's just nothing amazing. It's nothing that stands out about the brand in general. So I hope you found this interesting. In the description below, I will leave links to where you can find this paint at Jackson's. It's an affiliate link, so it will really help this channel out if you buy through it. And these paints are definitely worth a look at if you can find them cheaply enough. Some of the colours are quite nice. So thank you for watching. Please comment, rate and subscribe. I shall see you in the next video. Bye bye.